What's up, barbecue family? It's your boy Joe Mill here back with Killer Miller Q. And today we're going to be doing a nearly three year review on my Green Mountain Grills Daniel Boone Pellet Grill. I'll bring you in close, show you some pros and some cons, and you can see what mine looks like after three years of smoking fun. Come on. All right, you got a chance to kind of check this thing out and look all the way around. Now we're going to dive into some of the specs on this here grill. Kind of crazy as I was putting together this review that I'm already at the three year mark almost here. And this uh, time has gone quick with this grill. As you can see, I try my best to more or less keep it pretty respectful as far as clean. And um, I mean, three years old in the Arizona heat and sun. Uh, this thing is held up beautifully. I definitely enjoy that. This thing is about 177 pounds. It's made throughout in uh, different pace places with different uh, gauges of steel, but pretty much everything you see is between 12 and 14 gauge steel. So pretty good stuff. And then uh, with that said, it also offers you, that kind of swing around, the 12 volt power. And the one thing that's kind of cool about that is there's an adapter kit that I didn't know if I'd like because I didn't know if this would always fall out or not. But it allows you to switch out from being able to go in with your normal power outlet. Um, I got a, a connection that you can actually connect directly to a battery. So it's got two like almost with you, uh, the base cables or whatever uh, for your battery um, as well as anything else that you might want to do you might maybe I don't know if it got enough power if you could actually just directly plug this into a cigarette lighter with a car but uh one way or another they give you a lot of options as far as uh, the way to get this thing powered up it has held on beautifully though I remember when I first got this thing and was uh, trying to get it done all by myself and I did uh, drop it backwards a little bit once it was already out so there was a little scratch on there but it, it seemed to have faded over time but uh, through it all man I can't be mad at all um, as they switched the uh, names of the grill like I said over from the Daniel Boone um, to now that one is the uh, ledge the smaller one they got is now the Trek. It was the Davy Crockett. And then the big one used to be the Jim Bowie. Now it's the Peak. Uh, as far as everything I could see, everything looked the same as specs. So we're going to dive into the outside, some of the things that I like out here, and just some of the things that how it works. First off, let's start kind of over in this area, looking over where we got the uh, pellets and everything. You got an 18-pound uh, hopper here. So definitely holds a decent amount of pellets one thing that i like when i was kind of doing the research on here is there is a dual fan system that's in this uh pellet grill so you got one fan that's creating a positive flow of air directly through your firebox so that way that you never get air backing back into your firebox which is huge when you talk about the the chances of a, a burnout fire or something like that with grease fire traditionally what might happen is it'll start um, and from the firebox it'll travel all the way back where the pellets are coming and then if this pellet stack gets on fire obviously you got yourself a world of trouble so you got a fan that's always going to be pushing all of your air down and then over so that way it's actually coming out through the fire pot and into your food which is exactly what you want and then from there you got another fan that's on the inside a combustion fan and what this job is it's going to more or less help you maintain your temps and it's also going to help you uh keep your firebox from getting overly ashed out as i kind of open this thing up and you get a chance to peek in here still looking respectful like i said i don't do nothing too crazy i'll make sure i uh include the video that i created on how to maintain and clean your pit for me, it's worked well. This thing is still holding up like a dream. I cannot be mad at all. 
but getting back out here to this outside. So 18 pound hopper holds a good amount of pellets, doesn't run through a whole lot of pellets too quickly. So I find that hopper does great for me. As long as I got it filled before cook, I've never been in a situation, briskets and all, where I come back and later on I don't have enough pellets. I always refill just to make sure, but usually I'm always good. You got two probes that's available for you right here which makes it really handy when it comes into keeping the temps on your meat uh, consistent. You're able to feed those in right here through this keyhole and they got a spot for you top and bottom where you can get right in there real easy, real clean. Um, and I mean it just makes it real easy when you're cooking more than one meat or if you just want to really make sure that you dial something in. Being able to have everything directly here at the dial is great. And then also being able to see all of that, and I'll kind of give you a peek at what the app looks like, but being able to see all of those temperature readouts from your actual temperature to your probe readings and everything directly on that app is lovely. It can really make life a lot easier. Like I said, I'll show you the app and everything, but just wanted to show you that it does have the two probes. Basically, you can go from, if I'm not mistaken, 150 degrees all the way up to 550 degrees in five uh, degree increments on this uh, pellet grill which is more than I've necessarily needed so you can get you a little bit of a sear on here obviously it's not an open live flame but it does do the trick as well as you also have a uh, ah, here we go a USB port there I think that's more or less for you maybe charging devices or having something smaller like a uh, a, a, a meter of well, some sort or something like that to put there but it does give you the option I remember when I initially got this grill I thought this was so cool and I can't even tell you I probably have used it maybe four or five times but you do have a bottle opener on there as well so it makes it kind of easy for that so that's kind of the main thing that you look at or you see more or less as you kind of looking over there at the hopper other than that this is uh, the prime version so some of the things on the prime versus just the general that was upgraded is having the addition of the pro being able to have that Wi-Fi but then also having this look through screen you can almost see me in there um, you actually can look through and see your meat it is see-through now keep in mind it doesn't take no effort to get this thing back dirty um, again in my maintenance video you can kind of see what I did but I tell you over time where I didn't want to in the beginning I found a little bit of oven cleaner we'll get that thing done in seconds and you can be done with it and then I just chased that with some general soap and water so that way I don't have a ton of chemicals and stuff in there and then after I'm done cleaning I'll go ahead and let this thing burn off for a little bit and I don't have any issues so you do have that look through screen it is kind of handy when you don't want to always open your pit to see exactly where things are looking at or make sure something hasn't fell over or something and then you do have a light right there that is also one that gets pretty dirty i think you can take that cover off i haven't just because i heard it's also hard to get back on and i don't want to mess around and break it and have to try to replace it but same idea a little bit of oven cleaner get that thing wiped off it's enough where i can get enough light in here to be able to see everything a little bit better and i'm right off of the porch so it's all good for me and just looking at this inside it's a decent amount of overall uh space for you to be able to get your cooks in i'm not one that can say i've put this thing to the max and had on you know four fights 12 pork butts blah 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 you know like they normally will tell you when you're trying to get an idea of how much you can get on here but i can say that i've cooked quite a few different things and i've never had any issues overall you're looking at 458 square inches in here and like i said brisket stuff like that i can easily get a few of those in here with no issues and have plenty of room for the smoke and everything to still be able to circulate through from the bottom to the top or more or less from the grill level up to when you're actually going to be touching the top of this uh um the top the top of the grill you're looking at about 13 and a half inches so again when you come to cooking some of those taller things turkey stuff like that i haven't had any issues one of the add-ons that i did get and i didn't bring out here um is i went ahead and got the rotisserie and um you can see there's an insert for it there there is a hole right here and pretty much what's happened what happens is you slide this out that exposes this hole there's another bracket here and your unit sits right here on the outside and then the rod goes through 
and obviously you got your rotisserie game going on right here on the inside the rotisserie has worked great for me i haven't had any issues it wasn't a huge expensive upgrade but it was something that i like a lot about the pellet grill and especially since i got other grills it's one of the things that does bring me over here because i never have enough room in my air fryer to be able to actually do a rotisserie chicken so being able to come in here do a nice rotisserie do a couple things on rotisserie i mean i've done chickens um, i've done chicken shawarma or something like that on here all works great that's another great add-on and one thing that i do like about this grill while i got this stuff on here and before we kind of empty it out uh you got a nice uh grate you know some people like more of the uh diamond grate and i know those are things that you can switch out you can also get the uh extra rack to be able to more or less have you a double shelf again i've had no issues on space but those are things that you could look to add on but one thing that has always saved me as you can kind of see is i aluminum foil the grease dripped uh tray keep in mind if you're gonna do that uh, i'm gonna get my hands in here and get a little dirty if you're gonna do that there's a hole right here and you notice that mine i've been pushed out the uh aluminum foil you can do a couple things one you can not go as high up and maybe stop it here more times a night likely you probably don't have a whole lot of food on this end so that could be fine or if you're going to cover it make sure that you poke it back through and leave that there if you notice it aligns right here it's a little dirty that is a thermostat and what it does is it's basically always taking periodic readings of the temperature of the air that's coming through this overall pit. So if you cover this up, I actually remember seeing somebody that actually had a big fire and didn't know what was quite that, what happened or whatever. And when he showed the pictures of his pit, he had aluminum foiled everything and completely covered this up. So what ends up happening is you get false readings there at the uh, sensor. It's not actually realizing how much it's uh, or how hot it is in here. So it's just going to continue to dump those pellets into that auger. And it just kept getting hotter and hotter and hotter until he had a big mess. So obviously, if you're going to lose, use aluminum foil again, make sure that you poke out that hole. Keep that aligned with that thermostat so you don't mess up the readings of your pit. Or like I said, come up a little bit shorter with the aluminum foil. Maybe you don't have that issue at all. And then that's just going to be more or less lined up in the couple grooves. You got a groove right up here. And then there's there's another groove down here at the bottom. There's another hole that I, or uh, oval that I'll always make sure that I also expose much like that hole down there. And this pro whole process works pretty well as far as it being able to level off, drain directly through that hole, and then directly right into your uh, grease can, which actually I think I left mine inside. But basically, you'd be able to kind of get everything coming right through that nozzle and into your grease can, and it's super simple. The um, other thing while I'm down here is you'll notice they kind of got this latch. This was another thing that I liked as far as a feature um, is a way that you can easily get in there. And let's say you don't want to do a full grill clean and you want to actually make sure that you're good to go to start cooking. Your, it's the perfect size for your uh, outdoor vac which eventually I would say purpose you an outdoor vac just for your pellet grill just to make clean up a lot easier and you don't want to always use the one that's supposed to be used for other purposes and piss off the wifey or whatever have you but um that one fits directly on there and basically there's a long chute that goes straight and directly to the firebox you can plug directly in hit a quick second it'll go ahead and quickly grab all those loose lashes out of there and that way it makes it real simple to not have a ton of buildup down there and dust and ashes that's kind of floating around as you start cooking so the next thing that i want to kind of show you well before we get out there let me go over just some general things that I didn't see on every pellet grill that I, I've gotten so used to. I don't even talk about, but I love it. A shelf. I mean, if you've been cooking long enough, you know, there's always something about prepping and you're going to need somewhere to be able to put stuff or as simple as when you kind of bring your food out and maybe you prepped inside. Where do you sit it down when you open the grill up and before you put it on or when you bring it out to baste it for a second? I like that. I, this was something that I didn't have to add on. Um, the shelves are automatically already there. You got one on the side and you got one that snaps into place right here in front. That's a nice big shelf. So it does allow for me to get a nice size pan or, or whatever have you on there. And it's also nice and sturdy, clicks right into place with no issues. And then also you got your little hooks more or less just so you can uh, throw on your uh, grill cleaning utensils or whatever have you. But 
definitely convenient all the way down to one more uh, rack down at the bottom I wouldn't want to put anything down there that I wouldn't be worried about getting too hot but definitely it becomes a storage place for you to put your cord and then speaking on that cord one of the longest cords I ever had with a pellet grill uh, most of the time I always feel like they're super short and I'm always adding an extension cord to it That one there is an extension cord all by itself. So I don't have to add a cord to that. I love that. That's something that's small But um, you know keep that in mind when you're looking at uh where is this grill going to be located? How are you going to be able to plug it up? How you power it up? It gives you tons of different options with those different um, plug-ins that you can get. And then also with an extended cord, it just makes it super easy to do what you're going to do. You also got locking casters, so that thing actually stays in place. And uh, from when I think when they made some of the initial ones, you got the oversized wheels. There's a good shop wheel. Like I said, I'm coming up at almost three years. I mean, this thing sits outside all day long. As much as I might clean the rest of it, all of that, the ground, that's just taking the punishment that it's going to take so holds up well moves really easy it's not a big chore to get this thing into another spot or anything like that so definitely like that let's get some of this stuff out and i figure while i'm taking it out let me just give you a quick peek at what this uh drip pan looks like underneath here we're just having aluminum foil on all the time still intact nothing too crazy uh, no crazy rusting or nothing like that. I see a little bit of aluminum foil on there. The one thing too uh, is like a side tip that I just kind of throw out on top of when I'm uh, always making sure that I always expose the holes, the half moon hole down there and the circular hole that's at the top. The other thing is whenever, and I never have any issues with uh, the aluminum foil, which is always why I recommend it because it makes cleanup a breeze, but whenever I'm cooking at a super high temp, let's say I plan on searing something and I'm going to be going up to 400, I've never actually took it to 550, but if I was going to be taking it to that range, I'm always really curious or very uh, keen on making sure I don't have a lot of grease build up because that's usually when you'll get your grease fires, but the other thing I would say is maybe that's when I would go without uh, aluminum foil. Aluminum foil can and burn at those super high temps and then in some of those areas you get so much of that direct punishment from the firebox and everything and from that direct heat it can burn in some of those areas so that's why you did see that that was stuck on there but other than that let's look at the heat deflector plate let me put this down now with this heat deflector plate it's pretty heavy duty I mean this thing has not fell apart in any spot at all it's still all together still nice and solid but basically what its job is is to deflect that heat that's coming directly from that fire pot's probably about right there it's going to deflect that heat that's coming straight up and disperse it all around so that way you can get your grill to more or less an even temp the way that they have this set up and you can probably see this rod right here that my dirty hands is touching that rod connects right here also to the outside and what it allows you to do is to be able to actually move this deflector on the fly so if you want to create a hotter area than the next than the next you can slide it all the way to one side or bring it right back what they recommend is at about 4.25 you can measure directly from the wall to where it touches and that's about where you want to have it to get more or less even heat throughout but uh, another one is super easy. I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew that and we're gonna take this heat deflector plate out. And now you can get a good peek of that outside the unit. That's it. Still in great condition. Nothing crazy happened to it at all, other than a little bit of ash, but uh, this thing works. It takes care of the business. Now the guts, getting to the inside. There's my walls. It's not completely clean as you can see some ashes and all that good stuff in here and cleaned it out not too long ago but it ain't completely clean so i can make it prettier that's for sure but this is kind of what your insides look like it's a good deep drip tray overall i like that because of the fact you guarantees that it actually lands where it's supposed to it funnels out of there pretty good as long as you keep it cleaned out but that's always an area that you always want to make sure that you uh, get cleaned along with the cracks where your grate sits are always areas where you can get a lot of uh, grease collecting and then long term easy spots where you can get your fires. Every once in a while, I remember a while back, there was some light. Uh, it looked like it was kind of you can kind of see it, too, where it's a little bit lighter in color, where it almost looked kind of more or less like that. 
where the paint and everything was kind of starting to chip away. And once I was doing a deep cleaning, as far as the insides, the only thing I'll do is just kind of take my wire brush and scrape everything down before I vacuum everything out. And then all I did was hit that with a little bit of uh, cooking oil. Just like if you were seasoning it in the beginning, just to kind of give it a little help. But here is your firebox. So um, I had spoke about that combustion fan earlier. And that's kind of important as you're looking into this fire, uh, this um, firebox, as there's a couple things that's happening here. Now I'm sure I'm about to mispronounce it, but they got what they call like a Venturi style firebox, and the main thing is they got these vertical vents that you see going up and down that allows for that air and that uh, combustion fan to be able to blow air in there. So that's always kind of helping to keep that pot cleaned out, which is how you get so much of this ash that ends up becoming some of that runoff there or that sometimes end up uh, collecting in that uh, deflector plate. But the big thing that it also does is it kind of helps you from not having to always clean it as much. It keeps your temps and everything a little bit more um, steady. And then also, long term, it makes it really easy when you do have to clean this thing out, whether I'm doing the direct suck, which usually I will, I'll start off just to make sure that this chute is cleaned out, hit that with the vacuum cleaner real quick, and then come right in here, it's very aerated, so it's going to get all of that clunks out pretty easy. There is your heating element that actually heats up your pellets. The other thing that that fan does, it makes a, a more efficient burn, so there's a better chance that the majority of these pellets will get burned, and it leads you to a whole lot less that's going to turn around and end up just being waste or something like that. So that's the big things you're going to be looking at on the inside. So nothing too crazy. Not too many components. Pretty easy as far as the clean out. Um, you just got to kind of make sure that you keep an eye on things. Make sure that that grease doesn't build up and everything else. Let's get these components back in. Hey team, I want to jump in here real quick and let you know thanks for following along on today's video. If you are new to the channel, go to that bottom right corner, subscribe, check out some of the other videos you've missed, and if you haven't already, follow me on all the other social sites, check out my link tree down in the comments, and for everybody that's been here, I appreciate y'all, good things to come as always. All right, so I had to go hide out where I can get you a good view. Grab my other little phone here, and uh, I'll give you an idea of what it looks like here on this Green Mountain app really really enjoy this app it helps a ton um, I'm not plugged into my grill right now but you have the ability to be able to actually turn the uh, grill directly on right on the uh, actual app so like right now it's already searching for my grill it's not gonna find it because I don't have it plugged up but basically I can kind of more or less set up the Wi-Fi and everything directly on the grill I can do the power directly on and it'll ask me if I want to go directly into a full-on turn on or just maybe into a getting ready with the fan on for a cold smoke as you can see and I usually have this up because it's one of my main things I use all the time whether I'm using my Green Mountain or not is I always use those timers right there super helpful just in general when I'm starting my cooks I'm able to go ahead and kind of start my clock just so I know exactly how long the cooks are so I can kind of tell you things or if there's any uh, specific you know I need to set it for two hours to give me some type of alert or something like that um, I can do that and it can have that countdown going I can have two different things at once and then as you can kind of see right there there's all type of different alerts that it'll actually do where it'll actually ring back my phone it'll let me know that it's hit temperature it'll let me know that my grill is on it'll let me know um, once I'm actually setting my grill temps um, and my uh, internal temperatures it gives me a high and a low so it'll let me know when I'm approaching my uh, uh, temperature and everything but it'll never stop me being able to actually come out here and do the work but it definitely makes it a lot easier and there's less chances that I need to pop in here it's got a direct link to my flashlight right there so I can use that ah, directly uh, by a push of a button to be able to use the flashlight directly on my phone and then the other thing that's pretty cool is you can set up these grill profiles and I don't think I have any set up in this older phone but basically when you're setting up these profiles you can more or less start off and you can decide exactly 
what we're going to actually make, whether I'm doing a brisket or something like that. I can name this brisket. I can more or less set up exactly what I want this grill temp to be at, what the internal temperature I want it to be at before the grill goes to a different temperature, what I want it to finish at or what I want it to hold for so long. You can set all of that up directly through the app. And then from there, you'll just be going to a profile that will already be saved here. and It'll just say brisket. So then when I'm going to do my brisket, all I'll do is push my brisket profile. And then from there, it'll go directly into all the settings that I've already found out that I like to do when it comes to me uh, doing a brisket. So while I've never done it, that would be something great if I was going to do that overnight brisket or, you know, some people like to try to do that and then go to work or something like that, which I'd always be a little nervous about just in general. But you could do something like that and be able to set up a profile. And once you set that profile, it'll go through all of your steps, even with you not even being here. So if I wanted it to go ahead and start me off at 225, for my first six hours of the cook and then once i get to an internal temp of 165 crank that baby up to 275 or something like that until it goes all the way to 200 and then drop down to just warm and keeping it warm after that i could set all of that up on that grill profile and then pretty much be able to run directly through it uh, with the push of a button and not having to really do any monitoring myself so it is a nice feature it also kind of give you the option of being able to access some different recipes um, again, I've rarely only done this a few times, but it's kind of cool. I mean, if nothing else, when it comes to poking around, trying to get some different ideas, stuff like that, um, you can always come in here and be able to find a cook that makes sense definitely detailed they're going to tell you exactly what you need and how to get there and to have everything right there click at a button and uh, being able to share your recipe through any of your social sites or whatever have you it's nice it's just a nice add-on um, like i said i very rarely actually use the recipes section uh, I think I did a little bit more when I was first getting smoking and when I first got the overall unit just because it was something to be fun to play with but overall for myself I don't actually use it but it is nice that you have all of that as an option to be able to kind of jump into or just to show you different options of things that you can do with different type of meats drinks uh, pastries whatever have you one thing that just kind of reminds me of is I uh, see that they got something on there for pizzas there is a pizza attachment that I don't have for my um, my grill the uh, Davy Crockett but I do have it for my smaller grill. Oh, well, excuse me. I have it for my smaller grill, the Davy Crockett. I don't have it for my grill um, that we've been uh, kind of doing this review on now. It does work like a dream, so I would assume that it probably works great in this one as well. But that might be something that you want to look into too. But overall, the app is pretty solid. It allows you to connect in more than one um different grill if you got multiples and setting up that kind of wi-fi and everything and then you also got your support and everything right here at the uh touch of your dial as well being able to kind of um look troubleshoot some different things or being able to kind of reach out for support it can also kind of get some of those readings and stuff like that directly through your app so i like the app setting definitely another nice feature that came with the grill let's jump over and let me uh show you this uh, cover that came with it now more times than not when I come out to my backyard this is how I see my grill sitting there um, all covered up and chilling. I wanted to make sure I took a second to give some love to this cover because that's the only reason on top of obviously a little bit of maintenance uh, that's the only reason why my grill still looks good. I'm out here in Arizona as I've told you a million times and even right now in the spring we already starting to hit these triple digits. Um, the sun destroys everything out here. I haven't found one thing damn near that I can put in my yard and leave and over time it's not completely faded to death or it doesn't become to the point where it's so paper thin I can just push my finger through it uh, and just crack it in half. This cover which I think actually might have came with my grill if not I know I bought extra because I didn't want to not have a cover. I would recommend if you're going to get the grill, you're going to pay the money to get this thing. Um, I forget exactly what I paid. Um, this thing is still retailing around 900 bucks is usually what I'm seeing it at about. And I feel like that's roughly what I paid nearly three years ago as well. So it's held its value as well as it's held up pretty well. But and they haven't really made any newer adjustments or any newer lines or anything. So this is their baby. But if you're going to spend that kind of money. I believe that it's worth to go ahead and put a couple more dollars with and protect your investment. Spend the money, get this cover. This is a heavy duty cover. It's a uh, pretty thick. 
it used to be black i mean you can see in some of these areas it's a little bit darker so definitely the sun has worn the color down to make this thing almost whitish but overall this thing is still nice and thick i don't have one rip in this cover like i said this is over three years not one rip which i got other covers over there covering up my black stone and covering up my outdoor table where it's ripped within a year it's become so thin that it's torn apart this thing i can still pull on and I don't even worry. It's it's nice and thick. It's almost like an insulated uh, type of a plastic feel. Um, and it kept the grill well. I mean, it's fought off this sun, it's taking the punishment, and it's still holding strong. So I would recommend this cover as a definite for all climates because no matter where you're at, whether you're getting snow, whether you're getting rain, whether it's just wind all the time, or if you're getting a good dose of this sun, over time, your grill will start to show the wear and tear of that. I think that it's just a good natural thing to be able to do to throw a cover over it and really extend the life, excuse me, um, extend the life on your grill and then also be able to keep something that's looking good. So there's my cover. There's my spiel on that. Uh, we're going to spin this thing around, cap this thing off, and then you get a chance to see me cooking on something else in a little bit. All right, so you got a chance to take a look inside and outside and check out my old Green Mountain Grill. Now I got you back at the desk and you know we're gonna break it all down. I'll give you a little bit of my pros and my cons, my overall thoughts and we get you the hell on up out of here. So first off, as far as the pros of the look, I'm always big on aesthetically, I wanted to look a certain way. I think uh, some pellet grills look better than others. Um, that one, still a little bit boxy, but overall, I like the overall look. I love the features and everything that it came with. The price point, when I thought about it, compared to the rest of the competition, I'm not so sure now. Keep in mind, I bought this grill almost three years ago, but when I got it at that time, price-wise, it wasn't too far away from the Traeger that I had at the moment, but feature-wise, with it already having the racks that I wanted from the things that it was able to do as far as being able to add in the rotisserie, get into the pizza oven, feature-wise, I like that. I thought it was a great price point. Then you get into some of the main things like, how does it cook? You know, how was it, uh, how did it come out flavor-wise? When I switched over to this pellet grill, part of the reason being was I wasn't getting enough smoke on my meat, just like a lot of people say. From the very first time I used this grill, and even when I used the smaller version of the uh, grill that I got, I had a smoke ring from day one. Instantly, I thought my color and everything looked better, and I found for me, this was a great overall choice for my pellet grill on being able to actually get more of that wood flavor in there being able to get closer to that offset look and color when i'm trying to get to bark and things like that so that was one of the big things that kind of pushed me over there on top of the fact that you did have a lot more options on things that you can do things that you can add on um the actual size of it i've cooked everything on there from chicken and fish uh turkeys and stuff like that I haven't put a brisket on there yet, surprisingly, and I just noticed that, so we're gonna change that here soon enough. But uh, overall, size-wise, and as far as its versatility, whether we're talking about cooking or whatever have you, I could pretty much do whatever I wanted with it, so I enjoyed that. Also, being to have such a variance on being able to go all the way up to 550 degrees, being able to get that sear, being able to do cold smokes, do uh, jerky, to be able to do some kind of smoked cheese, which I haven't done yet. Uh, those are all great things that I thought was super cool as far as options. I also really like that app like I was showing you and having that and being able to directly tap in, being able to turn my grill on, adjust my temps up and down is one nice added addition on to having that Green Mountain that really just made it a lot easier for me to actually use. The app itself is very user friendly along with the grill. So just as far as somebody maybe that's newer getting into grilling, you can get into that pellet grill, be able to instantly start putting out some good product also have a lot of help right here at your fingertips as far as uh, recommendations on how to cook things, temperature, so on and so forth. All of it is like a straight go-to, so definitely like all of that. So now when we talk about cons, I really don't have that many. Just like I put price as a good thing, I look at price also as maybe potentially a con. At about 900 bucks is what I believe I paid, which is what a round it is right now. That's a decent amount, so a lot of times when you get somebody looking in for that entry level of a uh, pellet grill, they might be looking more towards the two to $500 range or something like that, so it's a little bit more than that. But I do think for what you're gonna be paying, you're gonna get a good overall product, so I do think that's something. Other than that, when I look at the cons, one of the things is, uh, while it wasn't a huge issue for me, you do only have one um, grate, so I don't have the extra shelf, 
which a lot of times when you have that secondary shelf, you don't got that much space and clearance anyway. So it's a toss up on whether that's needed or not. But however, you might want to be able to stack more things in there. You might be doing wings or something like that where you want to be able to put a whole lot in. I haven't ran into any issues. However, that would be one of the things that's a con. On top of the fact that uh, there's not a whole lot more products in the Green Mountain catalog. Uh, not that that has to make a difference, but it does when you start thinking about maybe additional things that might plug directly into it. Once I kind of get in one brand, next thing you know, I want to start looking at different things or other side items. They have the initial same three main products, uh, while they do have some lower models of them. Uh, the same three products, that smaller grill, uh, the size that I have, and there's one bigger than that. That was the case back then when the names were different. That's the same case that it is right now. So. While the product I think is still superior, um, outside of the things that I already mentioned to you, being like the pizza oven that you can add in, which I think probably does great, only judging from the pizza oven that I have in my smaller uh, GMG, but then also that rotisserie, I think it's got some great features that's added on. However, as far as me being able to kind of dive into more of the products and look through more of the different things, I don't have a whole lot else. So I'm hoping that's not going to be it from GMG and that we will continue to move forward on other things because uh, I really do overall enjoy that pellet grill. Like I said, cooks and smokes like a dream. Flavor and taste is always right and it's easy money. It don't work too hard. Over three years, my baby still looks clean. It still fires up in no time. I've never had any issues, knock on wood, as far as jams with the auger, or this, that, and the other, no fires. I follow the basic general guidelines. I keep it clean, and I make sure that that baby's always covered. Other than that, it is what it is. So, hey, let me tell you something. Next time we cooking, okay? I can't sit here and just talk about products without actually getting in here and getting hungry. So, I promise you I'll bring you a cook next go around. But I did want to show you a little bit of something on that pellet grill. After three years, still holding up strong. Somebody else need to know about that. And I know a lot of people is always asking my opinion on pellet grills and what I think about that Green Mountain. So now you got it. Shouts out to the family. My boys over at Black Smoke Barbecue, UNTV land. Anybody else I missed, you know I love you and appreciate you. Until next week, peace.